The theme of this project is taking uh, pop tunes and Broadway show tunes, TV tunes, things of that sort, uh, and turning them into jazz standards, or at least material that sounds like modern jazz. Steve Wiest's new release, Out of the New, is actually his second release on Arabesque Recordings. His first release was a big band project that I had the honor of mixing. And just as that big band project was a creative success, this new release in quintet form is a wonderful collaboration between Steve and four of his good friends and faculty members from the University of North Texas. All of them, in their own right, world-class players. So the outcome of this CD is really enjoyable to listen to. Well, this group came together through the University of North Texas, of course. We're all professors there. And I think we have a unique and wonderful rapport because we see each other a lot around school. And it's a whole lot of fun to get to record with these guys. Working with Ed Sof on drums, I first heard Ed with uh, Bill Watrous, Manhattan Wildlife Refuge, and he just killed me with the cymbals on Dee Dee and all these great tunes, and he's just one of my favorite drummers of all time. And his brushwork is legendary, so we've got plenty of brushwork on this recording. Uh, and so working with him is marvelous. Um, Lynn Seaton, one, uh, one of the most wonderful virtuosos of the bass in the world today, brings so many things uh, to the project that he can do with the instrument modern day uh, just giant of the bass and uh, so that's a lot of fun you can not only ha you not only have straight walking pizzicato but you get arco and all kinds of great things uh, Stefan Carlson one of the most marvelous piano players uh, happening today uh, harmonically and melodically brings so many things a couple of the pieces uh, that I wrote I sketched out certain sections and then just let him put Stefan into it and it's just heartbreaking, the stuff that he does. It's just beautiful what he brings to it. I think this is a good mix, good group of people. It's a, everybody have their own little sort of vibe and stylistically, and, and uh, I think, but I think the blend of this music kind of needs something like that. You know, it, everybody will bring something unique to the table. And then uh, everything's rounded out with Fred Hamilton, great, great guitarist. And Fred actually brought three or four different guitars uh, to add different textures and colors. Uh, so instead of a quintet, it's more like a, a big band because of all the different things that we have to write for and the sounds that you get to hear. Well, playing with Steve, um, if you know his, his personality, he's exuberant um, and he's joyful and his playing is, is exactly the same way. It's very exuberant, um, unexpectedly over the top on trombone. Um, and the, the screams and, and, and things that, that come out of the horn are just, just uh, wonderful to, to hear him do that. It's really a special situation when you're dealing with someone who's both a really good writer and a really good player. The music has, has special relevance because this person's not up there conducting an arrangement. They're, they're actually a participant in the music just like all the rest of us. I had to have the, the, my friends, the best team of cats that I could have around me, as far as the production team. Uh, so I went, first of all, to Phil Bulla, who I've worked with a number of times, all the way back to 1986 when we recorded uh, With Respect to Stan, when I was uh, trombonist in the one o'clock. We did uh, Maynard Ferguson's final CD, the one and only. So uh, uh, it was just a foregone conclusion. I had to have Phil at the, at the head table. Well, I've enjoyed working with these five players in various venues through the years, but this is the very first time that I've had the opportunity to work with all of them together in a studio setting. They all bring something very different and very special to the music. So being there to engineer and co-produce and hear the music as it just poured out of them was really an incredible experience. Uh, to round things out, I had great drummer uh, Stockton Helbing, and Stockton and I have known each other for a while now through our association with Maynard and uh, so it was a treat to have him here at this project as the producer and his sensibilities, his ears, the way he can tell what's happening in the music and just the little tweaks that need to happen, some changes have been uh, invaluable. It's been great. So that production team together really makes the thing happen. <laughs> I chose these particular tunes. As I looked around, it was easy. In a couple of cases, it was very easy. Some of my favorites uh, in the pop world. Although it's not unusual in the history of jazz to do pop tunes, um, dating clear back to Basie doing Beatles and stuff like that, you know, 
But um, these particular tunes, um, probably no one would have thought would be a jazz vehicle. And so by selecting tunes that were familiar, maybe to the, the average MTV watcher or someone who just listens to Top 40 radio, he was able to find a common ground to start with. I don't know, I guess you could call them, I like to call them derangements, because it's not really, you know, copies, it's not like a cover band copy. What Steve has written is a complete new take on all these tunes with room for other types of improvisation, sometimes other grooves, but still paying respects to the original song. I can see the, some, you know, some of the challenges that Steve had to deal with, and it's, it's not that easy to, to take from a screaming, sort of a lyrical, popish sort of a atmosphere, you know, bring it down to like a little bossa nova, quiet little bossa nova sort of a texture. It was kind of natural for me to pick a few people such as uh, Sting, you know, his music is very jazz influenced, so that was easy. Some people that I really enjoy are Coldplay, Maroon 5, Foo Fighters, people like that, Green Day, uh, areas where you wouldn't expect there'd be a vehicle for jazz, but the cool thing was, the, the, the hooks and the material in the music were so strong and so catchy that when you took the form of the tunes and put jazz voicings and jazz sensibilities into play, uh, it created these charming vehicles that were just too cool. We've just had a blast playing them. I think what the listener will take away from this CD is an enjoyment and a real appreciation for Steve's unique take on the music as well as the interpretation by these world-class musicians. It is definitely a thrilling musical journey. It's rich in both melodic statements and incredible virtuoso soloing. And I think people are really going to enjoy this program. I personally have always considered UNT to be the premier jazz program in the world, really. And uh, I've kept in touch with it over the years and with Neil Slater and all the guys there. But to get a chance to work there, one of the perks is that, uh, as I've mentioned, you get to work with people of this quality uh, musically as well as great teachers. And then you couple that with an outstanding uh, student body where it's fun to play with them. To perform this music for the students was really uh, a great pleasure because this is the music that they know from the standpoint of its original format. So they know about Coldplay and Green Day and all the various people that I chose. So I would hope that our students take from the idea that, that there's a diverse realm of, of compositions that, that you can creatively do things with um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be always tied into the things that were uh, written and recorded uh, in, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's a very important learning experience for the students, definitely to to uh, the being now being at North Texas, they have great great classical areas, and and uh, you know the, when in the jazz studies program we have so many great types of music going on on a daily basis. What I hope they take away from it is that basic tenets of musicality, such as form, orchestration, dynamics, time, etc., it's all rooted in in solid musical skills, the same skills that we're trying to teach them at the university. <laughs> It's like having a conversation with, you know, Lenny Bernstein and Socrates and, and Gandhi or something. And, you know, if, if you were talking to these people, you'd be thinking, man, what, you know, what can I say that's important enough to be said here? And yet at the same time, it would be so beautiful that you would just probably organically have something wonderful to say. So I find the same experience with these guys is that it just thrills you with the same spark that I felt when I first started playing in that garage band in Mississippi. It's just like, you know, it's just so much fun to have this conversation. And with these guys, you just end up trying to say something more profound. And it's such a nice camaraderie musically that I think we end up doing just that. Mm -hmm.